Welcome back to Jay Smokehouse and the History of Cannabis series extended episode 5. Cannabis in Antiquity, part 1. Now I'm breaking up antiquity into two parts. The first part will be Greece and Rome or the West. The second part will be Persia and Asia or the East. So moving to Greece and antiquity to about the 5th century BC. It seems that there are two theories as to how cannabis came to Greece. The first thought is the Scythians or the Sakas. Man, those guys really do get around, don't they? And then the second would be the Thracian Getai or the Thracians. Much of what we know from this time period in ancient Greece comes from the historian Herodotus. Herodotus was a Greek historian in the 5th century BC. But if I had to put a bet on it, I would say the Scythians. Now others say that probably the Thracians because they came in and defeated the Scythians and probably introduced cannabis. However, the Scythians obviously knew about cannabis before the 7th century BC. And if you have watched or if you do watch my previous episodes, they will explain why the Scythians already knew about cannabis. Now, one reason that Herodotus knows so much about the Scythians and cannabis is he was present for a Scythian chieftain burial. Now, I'm going to go ahead and let Herodotus tell it in his own words. These are quotes from his histories dated around 430 BC. When they have buried the dead, the relatives purify themselves as follows. They anoint and wash their hands as to their bodies. They set up three sticks, leaning them against one another, and stretch over these woolen mats, and having barricaded off this place as best they can, they make a pit in the center of the sticks and the mats, and into it throw red-hot stones." Now they have hemp growing in that country that is very like flax, except that it is thicker and taller. This plant grows both wild and under cultivation, and from it the Thracians make garments very like linen. Unless someone is very expert, he could not tell the garment made from linen from the hemp in one. Someone who has never seen hemp would certainly judge the garment to be linen. The Scythians take the seed of the hemp, and creeping under the mats, throw the seed onto the stones as they glow with heat. The seed so cast on the stones gives off a smoke and a vapor. No Greek steam bath could be stronger. The Scythians and their delight at the bath howl loudly. This indeed serves them instead of a bath, as they never let water near their bodies at all. Now, we actually have evidence in 1929 found in Scythian burial sites in Siberia, which actually match a lot of what Herodotus was writing. The teepees, the burnt cannabis. It's very interesting. And all of these burial sites seem to date between 5 and 300 BC. And then the description of them howling out in pleasure when they're actually breathing in these vapors. That's another indication. However, Herodotus does say that they throw seed on there. Now, I hypothesize that they actually throw flower and seed, not just seed, on the burning rocks to induce such elation. However, I don't know. I can only go off of what Herodotus says, and he says seed. And so, if this is all accurate and true, that would mean that the Scythians were the original hotboxers. <laughs> but like I said, some think that the Thracians are the ones who brought cannabis to Greece. And one reason they believe that is there's a lot more writings from Greek philosophers and historians on the Thracians and hemp than on the Scythians. And even Herodotus talks about the Thracians. Here's another quote from Herodotus on the Thracians. They were reputed to be a numerous and warlike people, and some suppose them to be of Scythian nationality. They have also discovered a use for another tree whose fruit has a very odd property. For when they have parties and sit around a fire, they throw some of it into the flames, and as it burns, it smokes like incense, and the smell of it makes them drunk just as wine does us, and they get more and more intoxicated as more fruit is thrown on, until they jump up and start dancing and singing. That, at least, is how I am told these strange people live. So it doesn't seem like Herodotus himself witnessed this, but he was told about it and wrote about it. But then around the first century BC, we have Plutarch, 
Plutarch was a Greek biographer and moralist, but he talks about the Thracians and cannabis also. He talks about after big feasts that the Thracians would throw flowers that looked much like oregano and they would throw these flowers in the fire and then inhale and inhale the smokes until they fell asleep. That's pretty interesting also. Definitely sounds like cannabis flower. It also seems like the Thracians definitely knew how to throw a good party. <laughs> there are quite a few more ancient Greeks who mention cannabis, but I'm not going to go through every single one of them. I think that these are the most important. Now we're going to go ahead and move to Rome, and it will be encompassing quite a bit because it will be the Roman Empire. Now some of the first writings in ancient Rome come from a satirist, Gaius Lucilius. Gaius Lucilius seemed to be around 180 to 140 all the way to 103 BC. It seems like they're not really sure when his birth was, but definitely know when his death was. However, there are fragments of his work, not completed works, but fragments. However, on the fragments that we have, it states that he knew that cannabis was a main source for sales at the time. And that's actually really interesting for me to find out because originally I thought that hemp sales weren't really a thing until 1000 to 1400 AD. So it's really interesting to find out that there are writings that they knew about hemp sales in 100 BC. Now I will get into this in future episodes, but hemp sales were a huge, huge thing. It, it was really advantageous to have hemp sales because they could last exponentially longer than flax sales, which is what they used before hemp sales, apparently. But that would mean that they could have gone longer distances than we previously might have thought. However, the first archaeological evidence we have of cannabis in Rome is in Pompeii. We have carbonized seeds in Pompeii, so that dates to around 79 AD. Then we come to Padanius Dioscorides. Now, Padanius was actually a Greek physician in the first century AD, but he was with the Roman army. He actually wrote the book De Materia Medica, which means on medical matters, and this was published in 70 AD. And apparently, De Materia Medica would go on to be the most influential medical tomb for over a millennia. And also, Padanius seems to be the first ever to actually differentiate between male and female cannabis plants. And he calls them Cannabis emeros and Cannabis agria, respectively, to male and female. He also states that hemp, that which produces rope, can also produce a juice that was effective in treating earaches and also suppressing sexual longing. Then we come to Pliny the Elder. Many people know who Pliny the Elder was even today. He was very influential. Now, Pliny the Elder was a nobleman, historian, and apparently a scientist. He actually wrote the book Naturalis Historia, which came out about nine years after Padanius Dioscorides' book in 79 AD. And in this book, this is something I found really interesting and something I still yet need to try. He states that boiling cannabis in water and then consuming said water would really alleviate cramped joints, gout, and similar violent pain. Now, as a combat veteran with very bad joints, this is something I desperately would like to try. And there are quite a few more Romans who mention cannabis. However, I'm going to let someone else summarize it much better than I ever could. Thomas Paine in 1766. This is a response to an article wrote by M. Marcandier at the time, and the name of the article is displayed below. He likewise acquaints us from the most ancient historians of the Romans that they consumed much hemp in their land and sea service, that they had magazines of it in some of the principal cities of the Eastern Empire, great quantities of it being, by the emperor's orders, amassed at Ravenna in Italy and Vienna in Gaul. The officer who superintended the matter on the further side of the Alps, being called the procurator of hemp, manufactures in Gaul and had his residence in Vienna, that their husbandmen used it in fixing their oxen to the yoke and other purposes of agriculture that their laws and their annals were written on hemp and cloth, that the use of it was very common in adorning their theaters, covering their streets and public places, their amphitheaters and their arenas for the gladiators, 
to the shade those who assisted at their public shows that the Romans had their table linen of hemp, and that each guest brought his napkin with him, whence he may infer that it was known to the ancients as a material of cloth for the common service of their families, as well as for the purposes of agriculture, shipping, etc. So as you can see, cannabis was supposed to be so much a part of ancient Rome. Now I'm going to go ahead and leave off there for our episode today. And then next week, I'll come back with part two on the East on Persia and Asia. Now, if you enjoyed this video or you learned anything, please leave a like and a comment and let me know what you think. And also don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell button so you can stay up to date with videos coming out in the future. And now, as always, Jay is going to go smoke a Jay.